Hello students, welcome back to the next session of video lecture on elasticity. I am Dr. Nagaraj from Bangalore Institute of Technology. Well, in the previous sessions, we tried to understand fundamentals of elasticity and defined different elastic moduli and also we did some derivations. Let us continue with the remaining. Next one is relation between bulk modulus, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. Consider a cube of unit dimension subjected to uniform normal stress T from all the directions. As a result, dimensions of the cube changes along all the three directions such a way that there will be elongation as well as contraction. Elongation is due to alpha that is elongation coefficient and contraction is due to beta that is contraction coefficient. Let Tx Ty and Tz be the stresses along x, y and z axis respectively. Coming to this diagram, I have Tx along x axis, Ty along y axis, Tz along z axis. When you stretch the body like this, x dimension increases. So length along x axis increases. Meanwhile, y and z co uh, uh, direction there will be decrease in the length. Similarly, due to Ty, there is elongation along y axis, contraction along x and z axis and same thing even for Tz also. As a result, we have a totally new length. Initial length was 1 meter. Now the new length will be along x axis 1 plus that is initial plus alpha Tx that is due to elongation minus beta Ty minus beta Tz. See last two terms are due to contraction. Similarly along y axis 1 that is initial length plus alpha Ty. This time elongation is due to Ty stress along y axis and contraction is due to Tx and Tz. Same thing even for z axis also. So we have three new, uh, new values as a result, the volume will be V dash equals new length along x axis into y axis into z axis. So that is length into breadth into thickness. So I request you to simplify this and neglect higher order terms. That means wherever you get alpha into alpha or alpha into beta or beta into beta, you just neglect it. By neglecting higher order terms, we get this equation. It takes just 2 to 3 minutes and of course very simple steps. Please do it on your own. So the new volume is 1 plus alpha into Tx plus Ty plus Tz minus 2 beta into Tx plus Ty plus Dz. I request my students to do this simplification just for better understanding of the derivation. Suppose if Tx equals Ty equals Tz and that is equal to T then the above equation becomes V dash equals 1 plus 3T alpha minus 6T beta. So I take 1 to LHS therefore V dash minus 1 equals 3T into alpha minus 2 beta. One thing you must notice here V dash is the final volume and this is initial volume because side lengths are 1. So 1 into 1 into 1 is 1 only. So your LHS is final volume minus initial volume. That must be change in the volume. Therefore delta V equals 3T into alpha minus 2 beta. Simplify further. Delta V by T. So take T here. Meanwhile, you take alpha common factor, then it becomes delta V by T equals 3 alpha into 1 minus 2 beta by alpha. Take reciprocal on both the sides, then make some substitutions. See, this is T by delta V, that is stress by change in the volume to the original volume. But original volume is 1. Therefore, it is T by delta V by 1. That is nothing but bulk modulus. And we know Y equals 1 by alpha. And beta by alpha is sigma. 
the students don't think that it is just stress by change in the volume it is stress by strain strain is change in the volume divided by original volume but original volume in this particular case is taken as 1 so therefore this whole thing is k so k equals 1 by alpha that is y 1 minus 2 into beta by alpha that is sigma so we have this equation so k equals y by 3 into 1 minus 2 sigma so this is the relation between bulk modulus Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio we shall proceed with the remaining derivations and also some discussion on limiting value of Poisson's ratio next derivation relation between bulk modulus rigidity modulus and Poisson's ratio see we already derived this relation that is y divided by 2 into 1 plus sigma equals eta so rearrange so that y is equal to 2 eta into 1 plus sigma so I did cross multiplication and just now we did the derivation which connects bulk modulus Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio here you rewrite y equals 3k into 1 minus 2 sigma again cross multiplication so we have y equals so much and y equals so much equate both of them so therefore 2 eta into 1 plus sigma equals 3k into 1 minus 2 sigma then rearrange 2 eta plus 2 eta into sigma that is equal to 3k minus 6k sigma take the terms containing sigma to LHS then we have 2 eta sigma plus 6k sigma equals 3k minus 2 eta or take sigma common factor then it becomes sigma equals 3k minus 2 eta divided by 2 eta plus 6k so this is the relation between Poisson's ratio bulk modulus and rigidity modulus next derivation it connects all the three elastic moduli k eta and y that is bulk modulus rigidity modulus and Young's modulus now we know this equation y equals 2 eta into 1 plus sigma which can be written as y by eta equals 2 into 1 plus sigma I just take taken eta here next this one k equals y by 3 into 1 minus 2 sigma which can be written as y by 3k is equal to 1 minus 2 sigma so take k here 1 minus 2 sigma here you get these two so this equation so now there are two equations 1 and 2 add 1 and 2 so LHS plus LHS that is y by eta plus y by 3k is equal to RHS plus RHS so here it is 2 plus 2 sigma here it is 1 minus 2 sigma so 2 sigma minus 2 sigma cancel it becomes 2 plus 1 just 3 next take y common factor it becomes 1 by eta plus 1 by 3k equals 3 implies y into take LCM that is 3 eta k so numerator becomes 3k plus eta that is equal to 3 then do cross multiplication 3 eta k into 3 that is 9 eta k divided by 3 k plus eta so 3 k plus eta comes here this goes here so we have y is equal to 9 eta k divided by 3 k plus eta this is the relation between Hink's modulus, rigidity modulus and bulk modulus next again you recall the equation y equals 2 eta into 1 plus sigma y equals 3k into 1 minus 2 sigma these two equations we already had in this derivation ok now equate both of them because LHS is same RHS must be same so we have 2 eta into 1 plus sigma that is equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 sigma observe equation 3 carefully we have elastic moduli eta and k on both the sides since elastic moduli eta and k cannot be negative so both LHS and RHS must be positive so both of them must be positive this is possible only if follow carefully 
both LHS and RHS will be positive only if number one the maximum value of sigma on LHS is minus 1 so up to minus 1 this will be either positive or 0 there is no chance of this become negative or even this becoming negative so what maximum value you can put here up to minus 1 that's all next maximum value of sigma on RHS is half so up to plus half this will be either positive or 0 so there, there is no chance of negative so in order to maintain positive sign on both the sides either you put sigma equals minus 1 up to minus 1 on, on LHS or up to half on RHS so we can say sigma is therefore varies between minus 1 and plus half but negative value of sigma is not possible you know why because if it is negative it means that longitudinal elongation is accompanied by lateral expansion which is not possible that means when you stretch a body there will be elongation in one direction compression in the other direction suppose if sigma is negative it means that there will be elongation in both the directions which is not possible therefore sigma becoming negative is ruled out therefore we can say sigma varies from 0 to half so the limiting value of sigma is 0 to half well in the previous slide we saw some derivations and also we came to a conclusion that the limiting value of Poisson's ratio cannot exceed half and also it cannot be negative in this table I have given some examples along with Eng's modulus, rigidity modulus and Poisson's ratio values aluminium, brass, copper, magnesium, nickel, titanium, steel please look at the sigma value it is well within 0 0.5 and of course there is no negative value so Poisson's ratio cannot be negative either for a metal or for an alloy well dear students I request you to calculate bulk modulus using y and eta values for different elements given over here you can make use of the relations which we derived just now now a small discussion on beams an engineering structure beam is a horizontal structure whose length is large compared to other dimensions it's mainly meant for withstanding loads the additional objectives of beam are to resist the load to counter bending moment and shear forces and also to connect the structures and to provide a uniform distribution of loads now types of beams beams are classified by the shape of their cross section by their length and by their equilibrium conditions here based on the equilibrium conditions we have the classifications number one simply supported beam a beam supported at both the ends is known as simply supported beam these beams are mostly used in general constructions continuous beam a beam that has more than two supports is known as continuous beam they are used in bridge constructions actually continuous beam is a more economical beam fixed beam a beam that is fixed at both the ends is known as fixed beam generally they are used in trusses means string like structures and other structures also in case of fixed beam please notice this vertical and rotational movements are not at all allowed cantilever beam it is a beam that is fixed at one end and free on the other end it is used in bridges and buildings your uh, balcony is a cantilever beam and you might have seen the JCBs that long stretched arm is an example for cantilever beam and please try to identify beams around your uh, around you and uh, identify the types of beams also here I show you some structures try to identify different types of beams this is the general structure of the beam whose length is very much greater than breadth and thickness here we have what is called cantilever beam so this is free and the other end is fixed so it is something like your balcony cantilever beam here we have string like structures 
So this beam is fixed at both the ends. So it is a string like structure, fixed beam. So this is a continuous beam. So this beam is supported at each and every point. In fact, even this pillar is also a beam. So it is a load bearing structure. So we have beams here also, we have beams here also. So dear students, try to identify different types of beams and also try to identify the shape of the beam which you see in your day to day life. Well dear students, let us wind up this session here. We have to discuss many more things such as types of beams, bending moment, single cantilever, expression for Young's modulus, torsion of a cylinder, torsional pendulum etc. This I will take up in my next session. There I will repeat the concept of beam once again. So I thank you all for your patient hearing. If you have any doubts feel free contact me. Thanks once again.